I will not be talking about steroids uh, so much in general as about how to uh, taper steroids when we have when they have been given for a prolonged uh, period of time and in how high doses they are used in COVID uh, treatment. We know that glucocorticoids are recommended now for the treatment of uh, severe COVID infection. There have been many meta-analysis of uh, studies. Glucocorticoids are recommended for the treatment of severe uh, COVID-19 infection. And uh, there are now many meta-analysis of uh, fairly large studies which uh, suggest that they are useful in uh, severe uh, COVID-19 infection. They decrease the risk of death. And they also uh, decrease the uh, morbidity in, uh, in COVID-19. Uh, but high doses of steroids, as you all know, can have side effects. And especially if they are used for a long period, they need to be tapered gradually. Otherwise, they can precipitate an adrenal crisis because high doses of steroids can suppress the, uh, the hypothalamus, the pituitary and adrenal glands. And if you stop them quickly, the mm -hmm. adrenal glands don't have time to recover. And so you can have an adrenal crisis. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Now, this is just a very uh, 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 diagrammatic uh, representation, which says that here is the adrenal gland that secretes cortisol and aldosterone, etc. But cortisol is what we are interested in. And uh, it is regulated by the pituitary and the hypothalamus, which also with pituitary secretes ACTH and the hypothalamus secretes uh, CRH. So CRH stimulates ACTH, ACTH stimulates cortisol. Cortisol has metabolic effects and cortisol high doses also suppress the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So that is the feedback which happens. And we know that if you take high dose of steroids, they will suppress CRH and ACTH, cause adrenal suppression. And when you withdraw the steroid, it's not that immediately the adrenal glands start working, they take some time to recover. And during the time that they take to recover, you can be prone to have uh, uh, adrenal uh, crisis or adrenal insufficiency. Now, normally the steroids, normally uh, hydrocortisone is secreted in this manner. You have a higher dose of hydrocortisone uh, or cortisol in the blood somewhere in the morning between uh, 6 and 8 a.m. And then it gradually goes down. And then there is the lowest dose somewhere at about midnight. So this is called the circadian rhythm. And we try to, uh, when we give physiological doses, we try to mimic this rhythm, but obviously in large doses, we are not able to mimic this. And so the steroids, they get suppressed. The axis gets suppressed. And if you take glucocorticoids at night, it causes greater suppression than if it is used in the morning. And long acting glucocorticoids cause greater axis suppression than short acting. But in case when you're using large doses of supraphysiological steroids to cause uh, immune uh, suppression, and uh, in the case of COVID-19 infection, that is really not so relevant. Now, steroids have, there are different kinds of steroids, and for our purpose, glucocorticoids, that is cortisol, it has many actions. It has an action on carbohydrates. It can increase glucose, lipids. It has anti-inflammatory action, which what is what we are interested in. And uh, then there are other uh, glucocorticoids which are secreted, which I will not discuss further. All the commercial glucocorticoids, that is prednisolone, dexamethasone, methylprednisolone as compared to cortisol, which is the one which is secreted in the blood 
in normal circumstances, we all secrete cortisol. It is more potent uh, glucocorticoid action. That means it has an increased immunosuppressive action and it has increased metabolic effects. It has lower mineralocorticoid action that it causes less hypertension and electrolyte imbalance. And they are all longer acting. So all of these have a higher chance of suppression of the adrenal gland. So there are both beneficial and adverse effects related to these commercial glucocorticoids. And this just shows some of the commonly used uh, steroids uh, compared to hydrocortisone, which is uh, having a, uh, uh, a relative activity of one. Dexamethasone has a relative glucocorticoid activity of 30, 30 times more potent. And it has a long duration of action that is almost uh, 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 a day and a half to three days action. And prednisolone and methylprednisolone, they are quite similar, not exactly similar, but quite similar. They have about four to five times the glucocorticoid activity of hydrocortisone. And their duration of action is about half a day to a day and a half. So this is important to remember that they are really quite long acting and that they are much more potent than hydrocortisone. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth about the adverse effects of glucocorticoids, the ones which we are using, but just to mention that there are lots of them and the one which we are really concerned with which happen quickly in a short time are the metabolic effects, which include impaired glucose tolerance and diabetes, which can actually develop in almost 20% to 30% of individuals. And psychiatric effects, they can this, these also happen quite quickly. You can have depression and hypomania, mania, etc. It may precipitate other types of infections. And it causes adrenal suppression or crisis, which usually happens only when you abruptly stop the steroids. So we always have to balance the benefits and the side effects of the steroids whenever we give them just to show that some skin changes which can happen, but these are on long-term usage and some ecchymosis and osteoporosis with fractures, again, with little longer-term usage, not very quickly. So coming back to glucocorticoid-induced adrenal suppression, impaired adrenal function occurs due to supraphysiological glucocorticoids. It can happen with any dose or duration, but it is more likely with higher doses and longer acting steroids such as dexamethasone. It is less likely to happen if you are giving a short course of adrenal steroids for treatment, let's say less than 10 days or less than two weeks. And it's less likely if you use less than five milligrams a day, but of course we use much higher doses than that in our treatment of uh, patients. Uh, so that is not relevant here. And actually in clinical practice, we have to assume that adrenal deficiency can happen in anybody who is taking more than 7.5 or 10 milligrams of prednisolone for two weeks continuously. And less than two weeks, we don't think that in most cases, adrenal deficiency happens when you stop the steroid. And the symptoms happen most often when you taper the glucocorticoids too quickly. And most common when it reaches close to the physiological dose, which is about five milligrams per day of prednisolone. If you do this very fast then, and then somebody gets an infection or some other stress, that is the time when you can have a crisis. 
And the other important thing to remember is that if the adrenals are suppressed, it actually lasts for about six months or even more sometimes. So you have to be careful and warn the patient about that. So these are all very familiar to you, more familiar to you than to me. This is the WHO 2020 recommendation, September. And they strongly recommended systemic corticosteroid therapy, six milligrams oral dexamethasone, oral or intravenous, or 50 milligrams hydrocortisone intravenous every eight hours for seven to 10 days. But of course, every uh, unit has their own uh, protocols. I'm just saying this is what the WHO recommended. And they also said not to use it, not it is to be used in severe and critical COVID-19 and not to use it in corticosteroid uh, therapy in patients with non-severe COVID because there the side effects have, are worse than the beneficial effects. And the ICMR guideline has uh, two different types of doses. In moderate, they have said 0.5 to 1 milligram per kg of methylprednisolone or dexamethasone 0.1 to 0.2 milligram per kg for three days. And in severe, they have written a higher dose of methylprednisolone 1 to 2 milligram per kg per day or dexamethasone 0.2 to 0.4 milligram per kg per day for five to seven days. And if now there are some new recommendations, uh, I would like to hear from you, but this is what I could get in the, in the guidelines. So there's no one way to steroid, taper steroids. And we should just, principle is just to taper slowly and allow the adrenal to recover function. And we should inform the patient that adrenal deficiency, what are the symptoms? And if any of those happen, they should seek help. And normally I do not test for recovery of adrenal function until the dose is five milligrams per day, but you don't even have to test. Once you have tapered very slowly, I don't think even testing is required. And this is one protocol which I wrote for our institute when they asked me, for example, suppose the dose is six to eight milligrams of dexamethasone, decadron, or lay between 40 to 60 milligrams of prednisolone or a little lower dose of methylprednisolone per day and is taken for up to seven days, then no tapering is required. But if you take it for, give your patient this for more than two weeks or you give a higher dose than this, then there is a, this is the protocol. You can taper by about five to 10 milligrams every, so you can make it 40 milligrams, for example, for one week, then after one week, you can make it 30 milligrams. When you reach 20, then you can make the tapering slower. So after 20, you make it 15 for one week and 10 for one week. And then when you reach 10, you make it even slower. You make it 2.5 for one week, uh, 7.5. Then you reduce another 2.5, five milligrams for two weeks. And then you reduce it another uh, 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 2.5 and you make it 2.5 per day for two weeks and then you stop. So it takes about 2.5, two and a half to about three months for this. And you can just write it down for your patient and they can follow it. It's very easy. And mostly if you explain nicely to the patient, they do follow it themselves. In between, if the patient has any symptoms of adrenal deficiency, and I will just tell you what are these symptoms, then you can double the dose, continue that dose for two weeks or three weeks, and then again, gradually start to taper. And during the time of tapering the steroid, if the patient has any stress, for example, he needs, uh, he has a road traffic accident, he has fever with temperature more than 100, or he has uh, diarrhea or something, then you have to increase the dose of steroid. And of course, if the patient has vomiting or any severe infection, or he has a severe trauma, 
or he requires he or she requires major surgery then iv hydrocortisone or iv steroids are required otherwise uh, this can all the tapering can all be done at home the patient can be on follow up uh, on uh, telephonically so some of the important uh, clinical features that the patient may have adrenal deficiency unfortunately most of these features are quite uh you know they are not specific so uh, uh, some of them include things like uh, nausea vomiting abdominal pain and may have hyponatremia if you do a, a electrolytes so some of these things you have to have a little bit of uh, you so the patient if they complain that they have severe weakness they having nausea they having vomiting some of these symptoms then you must at least think of adrenal deficiency and crisis in a crisis the patient will have hypotension and they will have an altered sensorium in that case you have to admit the patient into a hospital and give them iv fluids and iv steroids so adrenal crisis is the most serious situation most likely it happens when high doses are stopped suddenly it's often precipitated by stress like i already mentioned major surgery or severe infections trauma and of course i mean i i in 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 contrast to what happens if the if you have a primary adrenal crisis that means like you have addison's disease these patients don't have hyperkalemia so they have hyponatremia but not hyperkalemia and you treat with iv fluids and parenteral cortisone so whenever you are discharging the patient from the uh, from the hospital and you must give them written advice if they have been on steroids for example for 3 weeks or so then please give them written advice how to taper Uh, give them your telephone contact or a telephone contact with your uh, physician or a resident that if they have a problem they can phone up or whatsapp the person and you tell them that in case you have abdominal pain or vomiting severe weakness please double your dose wait for a day or so if you don't improve then please contact the hospital and of course if there is severe vomiting or severe Uh, if the blood pressure is low then you must get admitted into a hospital and it's important to remember that stress doses extra doses can be required for one year after the steroids have been stopped so to summarize steroids are a double edged sword they are very useful in severe and in severe and uh, critical patients with uh, covid infection they should be used uh however if they are used for more than 2 weeks then they can lead to adrenal deficiency so you have to be careful to give to taper it to taper it slowly and don't stop them abruptly thank you